Hello, you are watching Data Science Garage. We are going to go into a bit more detail about AWS IAM user groups, roles and policies. These are really important elements of the IAM service in AWS. So, we have our account and within our account we have users, groups, roles and policies. These are things we can create within our account. Now, a group is basically a container into which you can place your users. So, for example, we can add this user to our group and you can add many users to a group. We can then apply something called a policy to our group. The policy defines the permissions for the identities or resources they are associated with. In this case, the user gains the permission that are applied to the group through the policy. So, the policy has a set of permission defined. It is applied to the group and then the user is in the group and therefore gets those permissions. This is what is known as an identity-based policy because it's applied to an identity. A user account is an identity. You can apply these to users, groups and to roles so you can apply it directly to a user or to a group and then put many users in the group or to a role. Roles are used for delegation and they get assumed and you will see what that means shortly. Let's look at users in a bit more detail. So, in our account we have a root user. This is the account that was created when you first synced up for AWS and it used the email address that you synced up for your account with. The root user has full permissions and therefore it is best practice to avoid using the root user and you should enable multi-factor authentication. You then have individual users. You can create up to 5000 individual user accounts in AWS and these users will have no permissions by default. So when you create a user account. Unless you apply permissions, that user will be able to log in and through the management console, but they will not be able to do anything. Now, there is a couple of different names associated with the user. You have the friendly name. This is the name of the account is. And then, we have the Amazon resource name, ARN. And that's what we see here in green and red. The red portion is the account ID and then rest of it just indicates the particular identity within that account. So an ARN, an Amazon resource name is unique, not just within accounts but across accounts as well because it has that unique identifier in it. So even if you have a Steve in another AWS account, the account number will be different so the ARN will be different. With user accounts, you have got a few ways of logging in or authentication to AWS. That is the management console, the CLI command line interface and the API. With the management console, you are using a username and password. And for other two methods, you are using something called access keys. So, we then have groups. With groups you can create these different containers such as admin group, development group and an operation group. So you can mirror whatever accounts structure or department structure you have within your particular organization and you can add your users into those groups. So the groups are the collection of users and users can be a member of up to 10 groups at any one time. We then apply our permission policies to groups. This is the main reason why you have groups. So you organize your users by the way that you want to apply permissions to them. In this case, we want to apply different permissions to people who are admins versus developers versus operation personnel. So, therefore, we group them into different groups 
and then apply policies to those groups to give them the permissions they need to perform their job role. The user will gain the permission that are applied to the group to the policy that we apply to. So you attach a policy to a group and then the user gets whatever permission you applied in that policy. Now there's a little bit more to it because you can have multiple policies applied to a group. And there is a bit of evaluation logic in terms of working out what the user should be able to do. We then have IAM roles. A role is an identity that has a specific permission assigned to it. And it is assumed by users, applications and services. That's it. Those particular entities are able to assume the role and act as if they are the role. So for example, you might have users, you might have a mobile device or you might have an application running on a browser. Each of these are able to assume the role. In the case of users, you would run the API action STS assume role and something similar would be done for a mobile application or federated application. When you do that, you are then able to act as if you are in that role. So we have permission applied to the role through the policy and then once assumed the identity becomes the role and it is able to access AWS resource as if they are that role, as if they have the permission applied to that role. The access is in short term, so it uses something called the security token service and with a role you receive short term credentials. So they only last a specific period of time and then they get automatically removed. Now you can also use this across AWS accounts. You can have users in another account who are able to assume the role and then access resource as if they were that role. Lastly, we have policies. Remember that these are the way you apply permissions. You define permission in a policy document. They are written in JavaScript object notation. It is JSON. We have two different types of policy. The one at the top is an identity based policy. It gets applied to identities. And the one at the bottom is a resource based policy. It gets applied directly to resources. And you can see what the codes look like in these particular policies. All permissions are implicitly denied by default. That means you do not get any rights by default. Everything is denied and we then have to write statements in JSON to allow access to specific actions. So the example at the top is an identity based policy. You can apply that to users, groups and roles. Resource based policy can be applied to resources. Examples could be Amazon S3 buckets or DynamoDB tables. In this example, this is the bucket policy, so it gets applied to an S3 bucket. That's everything I wanted to cover today. Finally, why I made this video. I am big fan of AWS and trying to use it on my daily basis if possible. Several months ago, I have passed AWS Machine Learning Specialty exam. The next goal is AWS Solution Architect Professional. It is a super tough exam and currently I am in strong preparation for this with a perfect course from Digital Cloud. I used a lot of stuff from there in this video. Very recommended. They are super resource for preparation. Never stop learning. See you on the next video and bye bye.